Greetings, one and all two universes. In this show, we will analyze the stats, weapons, and abilities of two fighters to find out who would win in a battle to the death. Many people have predicted the outcome, so let's see who guessed right and who guessed wrong. And be sure to stay tuned after the episode so you can see the next fighters and make your predictions down in the comment section below or in a video response. And who knows, your comment or video response could be featured in the very next episode. With all that said, let's meet our tons of fighters! That's right, it's a battle royale today, starring the cast of That 70s Show! Now, despite this being an April Fool's episode, I will be taking this completely seriously. This is Universes. Whoa, 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 so far away, we wait for the day, yeah. for the lights so of so Our fighters include Eric Foreman, the scrawny Star Wars loving nerd, his parents Kitty Foreman the nurse, and Red Foreman the war veteran. We also have his friends, Donna Pinciotti, the girl next door, yep, that's her only character trait, Stephen Hyde, the conspiracy theorist who is likely baked 24-7, Michael Kelso, probably dropped on his head when he was a baby. Yes, I was. And up until now, everyone had the good grace not to mention it. Jackie Burkhart, the girl who won't stop talking and talking and talking and talking. And last but not least, Fez. Make sure you're not left in a room alone with this foreigner. These sitcom stars have the power of relying on 70s references for 90% of their jokes. Harnessing the power of, Hey parents, do you remember this when you were younger? However, they did come from one of the best decades in history. Aerosmith, Roller Disco, Stunt Doubles for Roller Disco Scenes. And it is still my favorite sitcom of all time, for some reason. Now let's see what these moody teens and grumpy old parents can do. Like I stated before, Eric Foreman is the Star Wars fanboy. He uses his nerdy trivia and lightsaber skills to repel any women. He also has a very smart mouth that sometimes gets him into trouble. Well, it occurs to me that possession is nine-tenths of the law. <laughs> Keep up with a smart mouth. And my foot will be nine-tenths of the way up your ass. Kitty Foreman is an experienced nurse. She's sweet, but has a secret dark side called menopause. And you, have you fixed the damn clicker yet? <laughs> what good is a clicker if it won't click? Red Foreman has military experience and the unique ability to place his foot in rather odd and uncomfortable places. Donna Pinciotti is a tomboy but is also a feminist. What? Stephen Hyde appears to be the brains of the bunch. He comes up with all the crazy schemes and has just about anything you need. He's the king of the stash and king of the circle. Michael Kelso isn't the sharpest tool in the shed, but he has the ability to burn others. He'll hop right on it even if he's not the one to start it. And he's a cop. You can't call Edna, man. It's poker night. No offense, but isn't every night poker night for Edna? Jackie Burkhart is able to command others, mostly Kelso, with constant whining and begging like a spoiled little brat. Then there's Fez. He loves candy, girls, and has a super duper special power that's not safe for work. But the best part is, he doesn't need outside help to do it. Ha 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 ha! How's that for a burn, Kelso? Anyways, now let's see what these guys and gals are capable of. Yep, the verse has actual feats. I'm surprised too. You see, there's this water tower in the center of town, and over the years, many of the cast has fallen off of it and survived. More often than not, they end up with a broken bone or two. However, Michael Kelso has fallen off it so many times that he's built up an immunity and can survive the fall without breaking any bones. This means his durability should be around water tower level plus. However, Stephen Hyde is capable of overpowering Kelso in a fight. Not sure if that should count for scaling, though, since he always seems to go for Kelso's weak spot on his eye. That's my eye! 
Fez is able to mentally affect foes by creeping them out with his general perviness. However, everyone's in trouble once Kitty Foreman goes into her ultimate mood swing menopause mode. Even Red Foreman has a tough time handling her, and he's a war veteran, but he is still able to stir up great fear in the rest of the cast, even if he's not fast enough to dodge a falling bucket of oatmeal. Sheesh, this battle's more complex than I thought it would be, but the calculations are just about done, so let's see who would win. And the results are in. The winner is... Steven Hyde. This was surprisingly hard to figure out, but I'll get to why he wins soon. First, let's get to why everyone else loses. Well, Fez is obviously out. I mean, I don't think that guy's even thrown a single punch. The only human being he's ever touched is himself. Haha, <laughs> burned again. Eric fails because as we can see right here, he can't even kick a door down. How's he gonna scale to the water tower level stats that the rest of the verse has? Donna's out because she uses feminism. It's like using a broken baseball bat. Why use something that will never work? Jackie may be able to use her whining to get others to do what she wants, but Michael is the only one who's actually affected by it. The others just don't care. Now that we've gotten the bottom four, Eric, Donna, Fez, and Jackie out of the way, it's time for the hard part. The top four. Red, Kitty, Kelso, and Steven. Let's start with Michael. He's a trained cop, he lays down the sick burns, and he can survive falling off the water tower. On the outside, it seems like he should be the winner. But he's so, so dumb, and there's still the fact that Hyde is able to handle him. I mean, yeah, he always goes for Kelso's weak spot on the eye, but why would this time be any different? Of course he'd still go for it. But that's not the only reason, and we'll get to the other one later. As for Red, sure he's a military veteran, but his golden years are over. He may be able to put feet in people's rears, but those are mostly just threats. And while those threats do scare others, actions speak louder than words. And when it comes to action, Red can't even dodge a falling bucket of oatmeal. Besides, even Red himself is terrified of Kitty once she enters her menopause mode. She crushes TV remotes and scares others into submission with her violent mood swings. Now you may think she wins for sure now, right? But this is where Steven comes in. You see, there's one special thing in the show that controls the whole cast. The stash. Even Kitty isn't immune to it as she used it voluntarily. And who controls the stash? Steven. Even though Red is strong and doesn't use it voluntarily, he's not safe either. He once fell victim to the effects of the stash as well once he ate a batch of special brownies. Guess who made those special brownies? Steven himself. The stash controls all, and Steven controls the stash, and he's got bags hidden everywhere. The only logical winner of this fight is Steven Hyde. You're soft. <laughs> How soft is he, Hyde? Softer than Liberace at the Playboy Mansion. <laughs>